Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes felt a match always destined to happen, and for the WWE Championship no less. But there's just one question. How did we get here? It'd be safe to say that Kenny Omega's start to the year didn't go as planned. Not only did he fail to defeat Will Ospreay in the Tokyo Dome for the IWGP United States Championship, but the Death Triangle would overcome the Elite and win the Best of Seven series as well to remain AEW Trio's champions. In front of the cameras, it seemed as though Omega was about to begin a story of his shortcomings, but behind the scenes, something far more serious was going on. Within the backstage area of AEW, tensions were still rumbling over the Brawl Out saga the year prior, and though Omega and company were clear to return to AEW, they were not out of the woods yet. Tony Khan himself still had issues with the Elite, and while those issues would remain behind closed doors, they were growing in tension with every week that passed. Eventually, during one executive board meeting, the tensions would boil over between all parties involved, with Omega berating Khan and the AEW board for how they run the company before storming out of the meeting. And from there, it was the beginning of the end. Before we knew it, AEW was pulling Omega from appearances left and right. His promotional material for AEW Fight Forever was gone in a flash. People wondered what for, and before they had an answer, a shocking revelation was put on show, this time for the world to see. Almost simultaneously, AEW, Kenny Omega, and Tony Khan tweeted out that Omega had parted ways with AEW and was officially a free agent. And not just any free agent, the biggest in all of wrestling. And after this reveal, silence. Omega went underground again, and nothing was heard. Not a tweet, not a fan appearance, not a cameo in a video, nothing. But the rumors were already swirling upstream. Now, in the land of the WWE, business is booming once again. Not only off the back of a massive two nights of WrestleMania in Los Angeles, but for the huge moment in history the world got to witness, as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes became the one to dethrone the Tribal Chief, defeating him for the title he promised to hold for him and his father, the WWE Championship. Cody Rhodes enters to the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania a year after his debut, now as WWE Champion, and explains the joy he felt on the grandest stage of them all, dedicating the victory to his father and his daughter. Rhodes has just beaten Roman Reigns, He's on top of the world. But just as his celebrations wind down, a figure emerges in the crowd. There's nothing to identify them though. They're covered from head to toe, but they stare right down at Rhodes for long enough before disappearing in the audience. In the commotion, however, it allows for an old foe to strike. Seth Rollins attacks Cody Rhodes and lays him out with a vicious stomp. Rollins grabs a WWE title and says, it's good to see you back, Cody. Thank you for keeping this title warm for me. I'll make sure you can be just like the champion your father was. And make sure you lose it to the better man right away. With that, the stage is set. Rollins and Cody trade barbs, both verbal and physical, all the way up to WrestleMania backlash. The match is physical. The blows traded can be heard for everyone in the arena at home to hear. But in the end, Rhodes is once again able to triumph over his vicious rival, Seth freaking Rollins, and retain his WWE Championship. But once again, that figure is there. This time, Cody isn't interested in just looking. He wants to know more. He goes out into the crowd and hunts for the last man. But by the time he gets to where he was, that figure is long gone. And the world is left as unsure as it was the first time as they laid eyes on him. The next night on Raw, Rhodes is in the arena, and he's looking for answers. He asks around the backstage area for any inklings as to who this person is, but no one has an answer for Cody. They know as much as he does, except one man. The phenomenal one, AJ Styles. When Cody asks, AJ doesn't have a direct answer, but does give Cody the insight he's looking for, telling the WWE Champion, think about it. This guy wants your attention. He knows what makes you tick. He knows how to get your gears going. What does that tell you? Rhodes takes the information on and walks off. When it's there again, that familiar figure. 
This time, Rhodes calls out to it and gives chase, going around the corner where he finds that he's sprung a trap. The now former United States Champion, Austin Theory, starts picking apart the WWE Champion, but Rhodes fights back and forces Theory to back away, with Theory saying, you've got your eyes on the wrong man. I'm the real threat to your title, not some dork in a mask. But Rhodes goes on to set the record straight the week after, defeating Theory in a non-title match. After the match, Rhodes immediately goes on the hunt, looking for that masked figure in the crowd. But they're nowhere to be seen, or heard from. They went silent. Rhodes continues to look for a few more weeks, but remains focused on his task of being WWE Champion. And after overcoming Judgment Day's Finn Balor at Money in the Bank, Rhodes believes he's passed on from the prior few weeks. And then there's darkness. And where there's darkness, there's light. Behind Rhodes stands this ominous figure. Rhodes turns to action and immediately looks to strike. However, the figure evades and sends Rhodes to the floor. Once Rhodes is back up, the lights go out. And when they rise, nothing. Rhodes is as confused as the audience watching around the world is. The attention suddenly turns to the Titan Tron, though. There stands the mysterious figure with everyone's attention on it. A question is poised to Cody behind its shifted voice. You want to know who I am? Fine, but you play my games. First a riddle. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Where is the world's most famous wrestling hall? As the figure counts down from 10, Cody realizes the game he has to play. It's not about the bad guy. It's about venues. Korokan. Tokyo, Cody answers. The figure replies, Correct. Riddle 2. In Tokyo, a bond was formed. A club was made to meet. But from this, there were those who wanted to make wrestling. As the figure counted down again, Rhodes was on the ball, immediately replying, Elite. Suddenly, the camera cut out, and not a word more was said. All that was left was for everyone to take on board what had just happened, and that final word uttered from Cody's mouth. Elite. With the clip going viral for the world to see, the rumors picked up again. Could it really be? Or were WWE trying to use those month-old rumors to get eyes back to their product? Well, the answer was closer than many may have thought. The next night on Raw, Cody's there again. He's standing in the ring and demanding for more clues, demanding for more riddles, but there's nothing. Cody says, I'm fine with playing your games, but we do it on my time. Oh, I go back down to Jacksonville and I'll go knocking down every sorry son of a bitch's door until they give me the answer. As if a word triggered a response, there we were again. The Titan Tron shifted and the figure stood there once more. Riddle 3. This elite was made, a bond was sworn, the wrestling world was in flux. A hangman, Cody, and the young Bucks. The arena and Cody replied almost immediately. Rhodes' blood was starting to boil now. He wanted the real answer. Just who was this guy? Riddle 4. This group changed wrestling and took fight to the WWE. But Cody, you missed one name. Tell me, you didn't forget about Little. Oh. But before Rhodes can answer, the lights go again. And when they rise, the situation has changed. There stand four men, all in the same clothing as the masked man who has tormented Cody for months now. Rhodes is ready to fight. He realizes this isn't a riddle. This is physical. Rhodes is ready to fight. He takes on the first two with guns blazing, but one arrives with a kendo stick and lays out Rhodes, dropping him to the man with Rhodes' own move. The lights flicker out once again, and when they rise, one figure stands alone at the top of the ramp, with another on the Titan Tron again. Cody, the games have been played. Not from us, but from those you named. I felt your pain. I went through your same struggles. Now I'm here because it's your fault that I suffered their blames. That I took the fall for you jumping ship. That I was willing to say, good luck, my friend. Because you never were one. You came back to WWE to be your own guy. To be the real alpha of your own journey. Well, I want you to remember one thing. One thing that you left behind. 
every alpha has its omega. The crowd erupts after the moment, and as Cody stands, the truth is revealed. The man behind the mask after all this time was Kenny Omega. Omega points towards Cody and pulls the trigger on the champion. The stage is set. The moment written into history, the headline of SummerSlam is a match we never think possible. Kenny Omega versus Cody Rhodes for the WWE Championship. Whatever the outcome, the industry was changed forever. One meeting, one blow up, and after months of stalking, gave us the outcome many could have only dreamed for. Kenny Omega had joined the WWE.